Yes, very much. And we do have yeah. a lot of challenges, don't we? <laughs> okay, you, 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 you can go ahead right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful opportunity to be here to present at Digital at Sea. And it's really wonderful to see you all, even in these ongoing challenges of this global pandemic. We are facing different challenges every single day. Here in Canberra, in Australia, I'm still in full lockdown as society is trying to reach these specified vaccination levels. On the global front, we are continuing to experience and to address so many different challenges. Next, please. As you know, I am the current president of the Nautical Institute. Um, and what does that really mean? Well, it means that I've got lots of challenges that I am facing as I try to provide leadership for this international organization from what seems to be a perpetual lockdown environment. For those of you who may not know much about the Nautical Institute, I've presented just a few little thoughts there on the screen. Really, we are a global representative body for maritime professionals with a, a number of maritime publications and that consultative status at the IMO. The NI is actually just about to reach its 50th anniversary, and this is a milestone I do remember as well celebrating with Ayala a few years ago. So my journey here and the challenges faced with the Nautical Institute have been exciting, challenging, and I know that the journey will proceed into the future. Next, please. So today I'd like to actually focus on a bit of a journey. This journey will have four waypoints. I want to start talking about this concept of the human capital. And we did mention, we heard that reference yesterday. Then I want to think about progress and not perfection. So we had a wonderful lead into that with smart, you know, not everything, but just having something that's smart. And then going into transformation and innovation, which we've heard a lot about. And finally, ending up with looking ahead. But I will warn you, as per usual, you will need to participate during the presentation. I will let you know when. It won't be too difficult, but we will be using uh, some facet of participation. Next, please. So let's talk about the human capital. What is this concept of the human capital? We heard of this reference yesterday. The World Bank notes that the human capital consists of the knowledge, the skills, and the health that people invest in and that we accumulate throughout our lives. So this enables us to realize our potential as productive members of society. The underlying concept of the human capital project is looking to invest in people through a number of various areas. The human capital project is actually focusing as human capital to drive growth. We know that COVID-19 has seen some significant impact on many aspects of, of health, of education, of jobs, and of equality. So by prioritizing human capital, it will be critical to the future of productivity and growth. This also results in that green and resilient inclusive recovery from COVID-19. The recent developments in innovation and technology we have seen and we've heard from the speakers over the past two days, they help to strengthen and support that human capital. So in essence, investing in human capital results in a stronger, um, more inclusive future. So really humans are the key. Next, please. This brings me to this concept of people and training and retraining. We heard about the value of people and the human capital in the opening remarks. McKinley noted the need to look at what and how we are training our seafarers. Indeed, all maritime professionals. The new Seafarer Workforce Report from BIMCO and the International Chamber of Shipping estimates that there's 1.89 million seafarers that currently are serving in the world. And they do predict that there will be a shortfall. 
there's a need for 89,510 officers by 2026 to operate the world merchant fleet. Next, please. So how do we prepare for the future? The societal shift in work requires completely new skill sets and a new mindset for work, focusing on leadership and teams. According to the World Economic Forum, as early as 2025, so that's not very far from now, as early as 2025, technology will gain so much traction that machines and humans will spend equal amounts of time solving tasks. The consequence of this development will mean that over 85 million jobs will change in just five years, and there will be hundreds of new roles, jobs that we can't even imagine yet. So how can we be training in this environment of technology and innovation in a manner that we have used for, for decades? So it's leading to this need to navigate in an uncertain and rapidly changing ecosystem, the maritime ecosystem. A key challenge to global digitalization in the maritime environment is this link to the human aspect. Those who use the technology the recruitment, the training, the retraining, and the retaining, keeping people in the workforce. This leads me to the OECD Learning Compass. It helps us to focus on the technology specific training, focus on the needs of skills and knowledge, attitudes and values which have been added into the compass. So we're focusing on those concepts rather than actually technology or equipment specific training. We heard from Professor Lind on maritime informatics and the body of knowledge that's in maritime informatics could help provide a focus for future training of maritime professionals. Focusing on skill sets to understand what tools should do rather than focusing on how to use a specific tool. So looking to the future, maritime informatics may provide a basis for future skill sets for maritime professionals. Next, please. So this brings me to some concepts of processes, procedures, and data. We've got lots of data. When we're thinking about data, who has it? Who wants it? Who owns it? How do we have that data layer? How do we keep it separate from the transport layer? We've heard a lot about the different harmonization of technology, harmonization of access points, the, the IMO, the data formats. So we're moving that way. We need to have that transparency and collaboration that was presented um, from Phil with regards to the work that CRM is doing. Seeing the maritime ecosystem as part of a larger ecosystem and moving beyond legacy systems learning from other industries what has worked and what hasn't, focusing at that macro level and really making sure that those standards are available to all. Next, please. Because in order to truly have a harmonized approach, we need to make sure that we all have the same standards. If we think about, if you go to play a game, you need to know the rules. Everyone needs to know the same rules. You need to have the same rule book. A truly harmonized approach to global maritime digitalization means that we all need to know that rule book and play by the rule book. But yet, some of these standards can be prohibitively expensive to buy or difficult to access. So we need to make sure that we have all the same rules. Next, please. This brings me to what we need to think of in terms of progress, but not perfection. To start small and see what works and focus on the cycle, focus on improving, not making it perfect before we use it, but making it work so that we can improve on it. Don't wait to be told what to do. Seek out the innovation and grow. Uh, next, please. In remembering that perfect is the enemy of good. To borrow from one of the previous speakers, smart not almighty, to be effective and appropriate and agile. Next, please. 
So we have some great technology out there, and I bet you're all using some right now. You might even have more than one in hand. I've got my handy mobile phone here too. I'm going to go to that later. So we have different technology available to us. But what are the requirements that we need with our technology? Next, please. If we think about the technology, what is it that we are doing? What do we want to do? How could we do it better? And how will we know it is better? Next, please. So I think we all know the Henry Ford quote about making stronger, faster horses. Uh, we have this uh, quote as well from Stephen Jobs. So the thought is, we don't necessarily always know what it is that we want. Next, please. I'm going to explore this concept of this cycle a little bit further. So if you think back to the 1960s, do you think Martin Cooper could have imagined that his initial invention for this mobile phone would go to where it has gone? So we liked what we knew at the time. It was pretty cool. Next, please. But then something changed. And we didn't really even know what we wanted, but there was something happening out there. Next, please. We found that there were options that were available and, and information was being provided to us. Next, please. And so then we think we know what we like. So we started off with this mobile phone. Something changed. We didn't really know what we wanted. Some options came out. And we think we know what we like. Next, please. Changes were implemented. Next, please. And look what we got. We like what we get. And we start using it. And we're using what's new that becomes then what we like. And we go through this cycle again. So I couldn't have told you back in the 1980s or 90s when I first saw a mobile phone that I was going to want something like a smartphone. But I like it. And now things are changing. The cycle goes on again and again. And it actually, the speed of acceleration is actually accelerating. Next, please. We have heard about digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. And we are now hearing what's next in this move along our digitalization movement, this concept of dynamic enterprise. Moving from a system level restructure to an approach that is responsive to changes in technology and expectation. Next, please. This acceleration of the rate of change can be seen in the move that we've seen from industry 1.0 through now to industry 4.0, where we find ourselves today. Next, please. We need to embrace this innovation. If you look at the decades of development from the 1980s and this concept of innovation, how we approached innovation, going from process-based to collaborative to socially collaborative, and now to socially valued, service-oriented, and one of my absolute favorites, dream-based innovation. We are embracing innovation to survive the present and to prepare for the future. So this, my friends, is where we get our smart tools out and we go and we visit a Mentimeter. So next, please, and then leave that slide up just for a moment or two. I'm sorry, yes, you're one behind me. Next, please. So next, please. Thank you. So. If you are on a mobile phone or if you want to open up an extra URL on your computer or your tablet, go please now to www.mintimeter or you could use the QR code on the screen, which is what I'm going to try and do right now with the QR code. I'm just going to go and do that. Excellent. It should take you to menti.com. So you go to menti.com on a URL and enter the code, or you simply use the QR code. And I'm going to ask the organizers to do their magic now and to switch over to the actual Mentimeter screen, please.
So when you do get there, and, and I know that in the background, they're going to be moving me over to the Mentimeter screen. When you do get there, I would like you to rank the six statements there in order of priority. So yes, please make sure you put that on present view on the Mentimeter. Wonderful. So I would like you to go down, the first one being what you think is the most important, down to the six, which you think is the lowest. And then watch the screen as it builds where our priorities are. So let me go and put my own on. Let me see, I don't that. Give me one second, I'm going to do my own. And I'm going to do that one. There we go, and I'm going to do that one. And I'm going to do that one. Submit. Okay, so we're seeing that growth. It's actually very, very small on my screen there. Um, can anyone who's there in the room, can they tell me what the top two are? Oh, they keep moving still too. Look at that. That's amazing. So it's keeping up with the speed of change. Is that one fairly high? What's it? Oh, the lack of common standards. It looks like that one's quite up high there. The high cost to access those standards. Oh, and the lack of global access to digital communications is pretty high. Excellent. So that I'll leave that open just for a few more moments while I talk a little bit about where do we feel our challenges are because often our perception becomes our reality. There's this concept of confirmation bias. If we think something's not going to work, then we're probably going to make it uh, in that process that it won't work. So one of the areas that we need to think about is where is com where is this digital challenge coming from? Where are the global challenges that are coming to us? And what can we do to resolve those? As we've heard, the actual technology probably isn't going to be the challenge because it's developing so fast. We can't even imagine what there will be there. But we do have this opportunity to think about some of the key areas. And if you go back to my presentation, I'm just going to my last slide now, please. So what I think coming out of this presentation are five steps to digital transformation for the maritime environment, five ways that we can help to overcome the many challenges available to us. Next, please. First and foremost, I think we need to support the human capital. It is so critical to do that. Then, next slide please, focus on progress and not perfection. Somehow make sure, next please, somehow make sure we can all play by the same rules, that we can access the standards. The standards are being developed. There's a lot available out there. They need to be truly global and harmonized, but also we need to be able to access them. We have to be able to play by the same rules. Next, please. And don't ask what the users want. Look at what they do and how could they do it better? What's available to make it do it work better? Next, please. Recognize and support changes in innovation and realize that this is the way to the future. We are in this concept of digital transformation, moving beyond that now, almost to that dynamic and that more liquid environment. So next, please. We do need to remember that the greatest danger in times of turbulence, and yes, we are in very much in times of turbulence, the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not that turbulence itself. It's to act with yesterday's logic. So we need to start thinking. We need to be that concept of being smarter, but also remember that being smart is not being almighty. It's not having all the answers. It's having the process in place so that we can evolve and adapt as things change. So thank you very much for your time. It's been my pleasure to present to you and I look forward very much to the final presentations and the closing.